Uh, hey guys, this is going to be a really quick, low effort sort of thing just to get out there. I've gotten a lot of comments asking what weapons I'm going to be covering on Bad Weapon Academy in the future, and responding to every single one would just be ridiculous because there's such a massive portion of the comments I get. So instead, I'm making this video to act as a sort of preview guide for the rest of the series. I'm going over every weapon in the game, minus things like most stock weapons, festives, war paints, reskins, etc. And I'll let you know which ones are going to be on Bad Weapon Academy. Alright? Cool, let's get started. The Force of Nature. No. It's just sort of fine. It's not amazing, but it's certainly not bad enough for the series. The Shortstop. Yes. Mediocre damage and a useless shove for very few benefits. The Soda Popper. No, it's honestly kind of busted. It has a higher DPS than stock and it lets you pen tuple jump. It's ridiculous. The Babyface's Blaster. Completed. Already has an episode. The Backscatter. Yes. Why bother sneaking around to do what the scatter gun already does just fine? The Winger. No, it's a good weapon. The Pocket Pistol. No, it's a really good weapon. Too good a weapon. The Flying Guillotine. No, it's good, it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to. The Bonk. No. Free invincibility is really good, especially in pubs when things like sentries exist. The Criticola. No, don't fuck with me. The Mad Milk. No, it's, again, really good. Like most of Scout's secondaries, actually. The Sandman. Yes. The upside is basically useless now at the cost of lowering your already low base health. And also I just saw in Zesty Jesus' new video that uh, you could just completely nullify the speed drop by strafing really hard. So yeah, that sucks. The Candy Cane. This one's actually a maybe, but I'm leaning on yes. It's good for countering Pyro Afterburn, but getting one shot by explosive classes sucks. The Boston Basher. No, it's meta. The Sun on a Stick. Yes. It's a rift weapon. <laughs> the fan of war. Yes. Setting an enemy up for mini crits when you can just meat shot them is almost always pointless. The atomizer. No. Triple jump is super useful. The rap assassin. I'm gonna surprise a few people with this, but no. At this point, it's basically the sandman, but actually useful. The direct hit. No. This is a good weapon. Well designed all around. The black box. Again, no. If anything, it's a crutch. Liberty Launcher. Completed. Cow Mangler. No. I've actually gotten a few requests for this one, which is weird. The lack of ammo management makes this essentially a straight upgrade in competitive, and its weakness against sentries is offset by its ability to disable them without needing to get close. The Beggar's Bazooka. Nah, it's fine. The Airstrike. No. It's already been covered in depth by Zesty Jesus, and it's not bad enough to warrant an episode on its own. The Reserve Shooter. No. It's a good combo weapon on Soldier, but admittedly useless on Pyro outside of the switch speed, which the Panic Attack covers better. The Buff Banner. No, it's the weakest banner, but it's still a very solid support tool. The Gunboats. Hell no. Battalion's Backup. No, this thing is really well designed. The Conqueror. No, it's just kind of annoying. The Mantreads. Another maybe. They're the quintessential Trolger weapon, however, the increased air control and lack of knockback are genuinely useful features. I just don't know if they're that good compared to some of the other soldier secondaries. The Righteous Bison. Yes. It's so bad. The Base Jumper. Yes. Floating slowly through the air gives you little benefit as soldier or demo, even with the airstrike as your rockets will be affected by damage falloff. The Panic Attack. No, it's good on pretty much everything except Heavy. The Equalizer. Yes. It's worthless at high health and not good enough at low health to justify equipping it over soldiers' other, better melee options. The Pain Train. No, you guys are sleeping on this. It's actually pretty good. The Katana. No. Overheal on kill is really powerful, and Demo Knight with this thing is really annoying. The Disciplinary Action. No, this thing is busted and always crits. It's ridiculous. The Market Gardener. No. If you're good at rocket jumping, this thing is terrifying. And if you're not, then it's almost as good as a stock shovel. The escape plan. No, this thing is meta. The back burner. No, it's excellent for the flanking pyro. The degreaser. No, it's basically meta. The flogistinator. No. The lack of air blast is underwhelming, but even with the gas passer, I was able to do some pretty good stuff with this. The dragon's fury. Maybe. 
The slow firing speed and finicky hitboxes make this unreliable, and often you'll perform just as well, if not better, by walking at people brainlessly with any other flamethrower, but that's a problem with Pyro as a whole. It definitely has its uses, and being able to two-shot light classes and destroy engineer buildings quickly is very useful. The flare gun. No. Perfectly designed, very solid side grade. The detonator. No. It's overshadowed by the Scorch Shot in every way, but that's an issue with the Scorch Shot. It's not a bad weapon in its own right. The Man Melter. Yes. Without another Pyro on the enemy team, you give up the utility of extra damage on burning targets, a shotgun, or even a jetpack in exchange for a slightly faster projectile and no ammo pool. Even with another Pyro on the enemy team, you have to rely on yourself babysitting your teammates to get the most out of it. The Scorch Shot. Fuck you. The Thermal Thruster. Again, maybe? The slow deploy speed makes this thing near useless as an escape tool, and how loud it is makes it difficult to use for flanking. Even offensively, you're a big target while in the air. But the sheer utility of that much mobility on Pyro is worth taking note of. The Gas Passer. Completed. Extinguisher. No, it's a genuinely good finisher tool now, I actually really like it. The Home Wrecker. Nope, the quintessential Pyro support tool. The Power Jack. No, it's good in any situation. The Back Scratcher. No, it's good for building Uber and doing an extra bit of melee damage. The Sharpened Volcano Fragment. Yes. There is nothing useful about lighting people on fire worse than you normally would from a worse range. The Third Degree. Yes. This is the only direct upgrade in the entire game and it's still useless unless you get a random crit. The Neon Annihilator. Another maybe. Pyrosharking is a meme, but it can be effective on certain maps. Also, its utility as a mini homewrecker has ruined plenty of spy plays for me. The Hot Hand. Yes. This thing is an absolute meme, and that's definitely the intention, but waiting several years on a meme weapon and a handful of subpar weapons really sucks. The Lock and Load. No. It increases your effective range, makes pipes easier to hit, and completely fucks engineers. The Booties. No, they're an essential demo knife tool. The Loose Cannon. I'm unclear on this one. I don't have that much experience with it. I know in the right hands, it can be pretty goddamn scary, and it one-shots light classes with double donks. However, I'm just not experienced enough with it to determine whether me failing with it is because it's weak or because I just suck that bad. In all likelihood, it won't be getting an episode. The Iron Bomber. No, it's just stock, but better. The Scottish Resistance. Maybe. It's been highly requested, and I do think it is the weakest of the sticky launchers, but I really just don't think it's that bad. The Charge and Targe. No. The resistances on this thing are fucking stupid. The Splendid Screen. No. I would argue this is the best Demo Knight Shield. The Tide Turner. No. It's got amazing movement potential. The Quickie Bomb Launcher. Again, no. I have very little experience with it, but it makes sticky spamming easier and more effective, so that can only be a good thing. The Eyelander. No. It's a straight upgrade once you get two heads. The Scotsman Skullcutter. No. It random crits you as a fucking Demo Knight weapon, this thing is stupid. The Yellow Pool Caber. Completed. The Claytomore. Again, maybe. The damage vulnerability is really bad, but the movement potential, especially when paired with the Tide Turner, is outstanding. The Persian Persuader. No. You get to charge forever. The Natasha. No. This thing is fucking broken and I hate it. The Brass Beast. Completed. The Tomislav. No. Heavy mains would crucify me. The Huolong Heater. Yes. You run out of ammo so fast for very little benefit. Unless you drop on top of people, you'll never get to ignite people with the Ring of Fire to get the damage buff because you're just too slow to catch up to them. The Family Business. No, it's better than the stock shotgun for fat scouting, I think. The sandwich. Psst, no. <laughs> no. The Delocus bar. Maybe. It seems underwhelming compared to the sandwich and the banana, but it's good for tanking, especially with the Fist of Steel. The Buffalo Steak Sandwich. Yes. Why would you give a fucking melee locking heavy item damage vulnerability? Why? The second banana. No. The recharge rate on this thing is ridiculous for how much it heals you. It's the go-to for when you don't have a medic. The Killing Gloves of Boxing. No. 
It's a heavy melee actually worth killing people with. It works great with the shotguns and sometimes the Thomas Law. The gloves of running urgently. No, even with the health drain, heavy moving quickly is a big deal. The warrior spirit. Yes. More damage vulnerability on melee. That's all you need to know. The fists of steel. No, these things are still basically busted. The eviction notice. Yes. The Gru, but worse. The holiday punch. No, this thing, this thing stuffs Ubers. Are you kidding me? The frontier justice. No, it's a better balanced Diamondback. The Widowmaker. No, rewards you for aiming and has a high risk reward system. The Pompson 6000 completed. The Rescue Ranger. No, still basically the best engineer primary. The Wrangler. No, this thing is blatantly busted. The short circuit. No, also kind of busted, especially out of spawn and especially on the payload card. Gunslinger, no, it's the battle engine tool. You can't go wrong with it. The Southern Hospitality, no, it's boring, not bad. The Jag, no, this thing might honestly be a straight upgrade to the wrench. The Eureka Effect, no, the teleporter utility makes this incredibly useful. The Stock Syringe Gun, yes. There is no reason to ever use this once you get better options. The Blutsauger. Again, yes. There's no reason to use this once you get the crossbow. The Crusader's crossbow. No. This is the best medic primary. Objectively, it invalidates the existence of the other ones. The Overdose. Yes. The upside is terrible since you can only use it while active, and also the crossbow exists. The Kritzkrieg. No, it's a good side grade. The Quick Fix. No, it is busted in sixes and really good in pubs. The Vaccinator. No, I fucking hate this thing. The Ubersaw. No, it's the best medic melee. The Vitasaw. I'm unclear on this one again. I haven't used this thing since it got buffed, since why the hell would I switch off the Ubersaw? The Amputator. No, it's good on certain maps when you're huddled up in tight spaces. The Solemn Vow. No. It was covered in detail by Array 7, and it's honestly such a boring weapon that there's nothing I can add. It's good and competitive because it means you don't have to count Ubers anymore. There, that's the episode. The Huntsman. Another one where I'm unclear. Similar to the loose cannon, I'm not sure if my failures with the Huntsman are due to me being bad or the weapon being mediocre. High level snipers rarely, if ever, use it, but that's just because the sniper rifles are really good. The Sydney Sleeper. Yes. It walks a very interesting line where it's underwhelming in pubs, but banned in sixes for very good reason. The Bizarre Bargain. No, this thing is overpowered in pubs. The Machina. No, it's the sniper rifle, but body shots are better. The Hitman's Heatmaker. No, it's the sniper rifle, but body shots are worse. The Classic. Completed. The Cleaner's Carbine. Yes. It's really slow, and the upside only takes effect after you do 100 damage, which is ridiculous. The Jurati. No, this is the best sniper secondary. All the sniper backpacks, they're getting their own video. It's not a bad Weapon Academy video, though. The Tribalman's Shiv. Yes. The only upside was nerfed ages ago. Damage over time a sniper is pretty damn useless when you're at close range. The Bushwalker. No. This pairs well with two of Sniper secondaries and basically invalidates his biggest weakness for free. The Shan Sha. No. It's boring, but not bad. The Ambassador. Still no. Being able to two-shot pyros outside of their effective range, quickly two-tap light classes, break their razorbacks, do some serious damage at close range where you're meant to be a spy in the first place, and pick off targets 102 health and under are all really, really useful attributes. Oh, but first it has a lower DPS than the stock revolver. That means it's objectively worse, and it means it's very useful in any situation. Fuck off! God damn. The la Jodolo. No, this is a fantastic utility tool. The Enforcer. Completed. The Diamondback. No, it's the Ambassador, but you get crits for free, with no falloff, just for doing what Spy already does normally, with basically no cost. Fuck this thing. Your eternal reward. Yes. The downsides are crippling and the upsides are middling. This thing is spy hard mode. The Conniver's Kunai. No. You make yourself unkillable by doing what spy already does normally. The Big Earner. No. 
It's good for quick getaways and getting Dead Ringer Cloak back really quickly. The Spy Sickle. No, you get to fuck over Pyros for free. The Cloak and Dagger. No, it's fine. The Dead Ringer. No, it's not as bad as Spy Mains make it out to be after the nerf. The Red Tape Recorder. Completed. And that's all of them. So here's a list of all the ones that I'm definitely going to do, and here's a list of all the maybes and unclears. So thanks everyone for the massive support and for watching the series, and I'll see you for the next one. Until then.